In this video, we're going to talk about negotiation. Now, this is a really hard topic for strength conditioning. And I think one of the aspects about negotiation is really what leverage or what strong suits do we have when we're trying to get more, get more money, get more things that are compensation based, whatever it is, how do we leverage ourselves to get more from our position? And this is something as we dive into these, what are the big levers we can pull to get more money or get more compensation or just more general support within this entity of strength conditioning? So let's dive into this module. Got a lot to unpack here. Let's go. So the first thing to go over when we're talking about negotiation is really what leverage do we actually have? And that's something that as we start to dive into with talking to any supervisor or any person hiring us, is how do we get more? And what, what platform are they coming from, right? And that's the thing that's so important about this conversation, that if we look through, hey, I want to have more money for me or my staff, or hey, I've been busting my ass working 60 hours a week trying to get more all right just got this job opportunity moving all the way from across the country and i don't really have a leg to stand on financially i need to be able to get more to justify this position but the other end it goes to well what is your market value and that's something as we look through all our strength conditioning that probably the area that we most neglect in regards to negotiation is not really understanding the market value and as we start to dive into in this chapter of the book, as well as this module, think in the back of your mind is how much would it cost to replace this position or do it without me? And one of the stories I always like to go through in regards to my career is I got fired from University of Southern California and part of a staff uh, that we had two 10 win seasons. And I personally did a lot. I did all of the programming, I did all the nutrition, I did whatever sports science at the time, which is pretty antiquated now, but relatively speaking, it was probably a little bit ahead of the curve uh, for that period. And then looking through all the other things, I was doing punishment, I was doing return to play, I was doing competition, I was doing everything. Uh, I was having one-on-ones with the players every single week. I had a lot of things I was tied into. So when it comes down to letting me go, well, what really leverage do I have to saying, hey, I think I should stay on or better yet, hey, I should get a raise for all the things that I'm doing. And that creates a question of how do I really know? Now, in hindsight, since I've left is that position that I had because it was the only football assistant has transformed into a four or five person setup that they were taking four people to collectively do the job that I was doing myself. And they were all making now more, relatively speaking, than I did at that given point. So I was making X and they're making X plus to do the job I'm doing collectively. So let's say that it cost at least four times the amount, maybe upwards to six times the amount to replace me. So my market value there may be skewed towards that direction. I could have a legitimate argument to say that, hey, I was making this amount, $60,000 a year living in Los Angeles, and it's taking you 250, 350, maybe even $400,000 to replace me. That you've had to four to five times, even upwards to six times X that amount to replace the job that I was doing myself. Now, should I be making that much money? No, but when I coming into saying, well, what would it cost to replace me? Well, now we have a conversation, right? Do you think you should be paying $400,000 to do the job that I'm doing myself? And that's something that is what we're looking at apples to apples that we have to start to really evaluate what your market value is. And that goes into this another conversation about when we start to look at what windows do we really actually have to do this, right? And I remember when I got the opportunity to work there, I got $50,000 to start. It was a... 12 grand raise from when I made, or, or 14 grand raise from when I made at Georgia Tech. Remember, this is early, late 2000s, so 2009, 2010. Okay, this is a, a substantial pay raise, I guess, and from making $36,000 a year going up to 50. You know, debatable how much more cost of living was in Atlanta versus a, a Los Angeles, but truth is, they're saying, well, you're getting a $14,000 pay raise, so you should be thankful. And 
I was, and I was thankful for the opportunity. I was working for a blue chip program. The, the trade-off was I'm going to take a short-term hit for a long-term gain because the thought would be I have a lot of opportunity from here to get a head strength conditioning job and double, triple, quadruple that a salary amount, which as you break it down, that's the game. They're looking at this from we're going to underpay you for the chance to have an opportunity for you to get whatever it is you're worth down the road that you're going to take this now. And when we looked at it from the internship perspective, that should have been the arrangement when I interned and volunteered, but now it transitions, transitions into that assistant position and that top assistant position to now you have whatever it is in the back end from that, that you're investing your time, you're doing your volunteer work, or you're taking your underpaid salary in exchange for the opportunity to be at University of Southern California and having an opportunity to be a head strength coach after this and quadrupling whatever it is you're making now. It's a, it's a gamble, but that's the way they play it. Now, in regards to if I was going to ask for more, let's play that back. What window would I actually have to get that? Now, I went from there to becoming a head strength coach at Army West Point and just got told I'm making $125,000 a year plus a house. And again, the logic is I'm now more than doubling my salary as well as, okay, well, I'm going to get a house, so maybe you could argue I'm almost tripling it. And I was happy to have a job. And as I look back, Maybe I could have negotiated for more. Maybe I should have just been thankful for the opportunity I had. $125,000 a year in 2014 was a substantial amount of money. I don't know. I could look back and say, I should have asked for more. I should have asked for a lot different. Or I could say collectively, all right, I was fortunate enough to be a head strength coach and I got fired, so I should be able to, I shouldn't complain because it's $125,000 plus a house more than I would have had otherwise. But on the other note, Maybe it was a window, maybe it was an opportunity. And that's the thing that I'm looking through now is I'm looking back and saying, well, asking for more comes into what do you believe your value is? And you can look at the market value, head strength coaches across this. I was one of 130 coaches out there making a head strength coach salary working with power or working with a division one football program. You could say, okay, well, let's look at the range of that and say of the top and the low, where would I fall? Okay, you got power five, they're all making probably three, four hundred thousand dollars plus. Then you got non-power five, they're making probably under a hundred thousand. I'm on the low end, so now I'm on the bottom tier, so the the tenth percentile, and then all the way up to the hundredth percentile where you're looking at the million guy, million dollar guys. And where do you fall in that spectrum? In my market value, how much contribution am I bringing? What is my potential value? Worked at University of Southern California, worked at Georgia Tech. I have two master's degrees. I have countless certifications. I have a great pedigree, a great, a great skill set. What is my market value? Is it based off of where I'm working or what I can do? But the other thing we could talk about is what's the rest of the athletic department making? I could look at the football staff. Head football coach is making a million. Okay, so that kind of sets the, the range. Okay, well, the, the lowest ranking or lowest paid football assistant is making a comparable to me. Do I fall into the same route of that? Maybe. Or do I look at it from, okay, well, I'm comparing myself to the other academies. I'm comparing myself to other, other comparable schools that are playing a very favorable schedule that have pretty good resources. All those things should be considered. But the reality of the situation is we're constantly being compared for market value, not by what others are making, but why the, by the fact that someone's willing to do your job for a lot less, if not zero, as well as, here's the really big kicker, is that they're always saying this is a stepping stone job, that you are doing this for an exchange for an opportunity somewhere else, every single time. And when you reach that head strength coach status, you're kind of playing in this small window of opportunity to monetize that as much as possible, to either back pay whatever it is I wasn't paid before, or on the front end, to get as much runway till I get fired. After I get let go, I need to have enough in my savings to survive a transition of becoming an assistant again or having to move or having to change careers. All those things are really invaluable to talk about. So as I go through the job interview, hey, here's your, here's your uh, opportunity. And I can look at a couple things. How many people did the interview? Okay, so if I look through, they interviewed 100 people. They whittled it down to five in-person interviews. They've been doing this for weeks on end, if not months. Okay, now they're at this 
it's really big opportunity here. Like you're five of a hundred of people and you did a really good job in the interview and you go, okay, I, what would be a good salary? Like, well, I'm making this much here and I think it should be more than that. Or, hey, I was underpaid there. So not only I should be paid for more, more than that, but I should be paid that plus. That could go. What I traditionally see in interviews is you really don't have a leg to stand on when you ask for more money. Don't undershoot yourself. Don't say that you should be paid this much. But I would say in that interview period, there's a very vulnerable spot that you can really damage your opportunities by asking for too much. Where the bigger window comes is really in this setup of, hey, I got the job offer. Now they said that you are the best candidate. And we talked about this with the interview, that you're the person that they're most excited about. They went through the whole entire inventory of everyone else and collectively, you were the best person. You get a job offer sheet. If you don't get a job offer sheet, you should probably rethink working there because it's not that great of a setup but that's another conversation. If we look at it though, from the window where you can actually get more, that's probably it. That's probably the best opportunity where you should ask for more. Cause you've already gotten the job offer. They've already whittled through this. The more people that had to go through and the longer it took, the more desperate they are. So if you're the person that they really like, you should think about in that window from job offer to accepting the job of asking for more. That is your biggest, win biggest window of opportunity. Because now it's a numbers game. They need to get you in quick. They need you doing your job. They need to get you set up through HR. They need to get you moved out there. They need to do all these things. Time is, time is ticking. Now you have a very strong negotiation opportunity to go, I want 10% more or I want more in regards to benefits or I want more in regards to bonuses. I want more in regards to maybe continue education allowance. Maybe I want this. I'm going to spend this much money every single year on continuing education. And that's the biggest thing you're getting with me as a person that's committed to excellence. So you go, Hey, I really think you should invest more in this area. And they go, Oh, well, okay. It's pretty tough. And it doesn't have to be an egregiously higher offer. It could be five to 10% more in some capacity through all the other mechanisms. So if that army came back and offered me the job and I said, okay, 125 plus a house. And they said, you're going to get two bonuses, beating Navy and winning a CIC, CIC of $5,000. Could I have argued, why isn't that 5%, which would bump me up to 6,000 or 10%, which would bump me up to 12,000 for a bonus? could have argued that. Maybe I said, hey, maybe I would like a bowl game bonus. Hey, maybe I would like a 10 win season bonus. Maybe I could have said, I really wanna make 135. Any of those things in that situation, I could have leveraged and I could have spun it as, I'm the best person for the job. I don't think it's that too much to say that the job I'm gonna do is gonna be excellent. And the window that I'm actually gonna get more later is, is gone. So if I don't ask for it now, I'll never get it. And here's the thing that you got to get comfortable for. And this is something I've over the past seven years of being a business owner of being comfortable asking for money, right? If you can go through my console page, you'll see a, really a lot of high numbers. You'll see $500 per hour on a console. You'll see $12,000 for an audit. You'll see $3,000 for a weekend or for a three-day mentorship. You'll see $5,000 for a workshop. Well, you might say those are really high numbers, but that's what I determine as my value. And that's the other thing people were willing to pay me. So therefore I feel like that's my value. So I'm not afraid to ask for that now. I'm not afraid to ask for that because I know people are willing to do it as well as I know what my value is. I know what I'm capable of and I know that I'm worth that. Now in regards to going for a job in a team setting, a lot of times you just feel like you should just be grateful for the opportunity that all the sacrifice and all the time you spent without earning, get, earning a, a really fair wage should be just completely thrown out. And that's not the future employer's problem because you had so many people apply for your position and then the willingness to ask for more becomes harder and harder. That is the issue. You need to disassociate from this is a great opportunity and all the sacrifice you have to getting blinders on to saying, how do I get this money now? How do I get this opportunity now? And we'll talk about this down the road, but the final aspect is when you have an opportunity to go somewhere else. 
stay or go. So the, the, one of the modules we have in the hard choices will be going through staying or going. In reality is the biggest, biggest business tactic I could ever give you from a administrator or a actual employee is if you have another opportunity and you think it's better in some way, whether you get more compensation, more responsibility, or you get more favorable conditions, like you're closer to home, or you have better cost of living for you and your family, you should take it. Don't look back because if you do leverage and negotiate more to stay where you're currently at, you'll get a couple things from it. One, your superiors will resent the fact that they don't think that you've earned it. You just had, you just strong armed them, which there's no escaping that. Whether it's true or not, you might have been underpaid and underappreciated, and that now more came from a proposition of, hey, I'm going to go unless they'll still perceive you as taking advantage of them. So you have to take it from there. Two, if they appreciated the time, I probably should have gave that to you in, for, in, the for, in the fourth round. And we'll talk about this in terms of increasing your value over time in the later chapters of this. But as we're going through this process of, hey, if I really want to, if I have another opportunity and I'm looking over, is the grass actually greener? I'm kicking some tires. I'm looking at other jobs. In your heart, you probably feel like it's time to go. It's probably for, ready for another opportunity. And you should probably never take that. Plus, your peers will always view you as you didn't earn it. You just basically manipulated them into getting more money and your value isn't more than it was before let alone more than relatively speaking to your counterparts so making more money than them and they know that it's more it's more obvious than they, than you think that i am going to stay here and i'm really appreciative of the opportunity to stay here coming at a cost to the school and that's where the real big thing about all this is is looking at from a negotiation standpoint and understanding the pros and the cons and when you ask for more money in a job interview, you're going to risk the opportunity to get that job. When you ask for more money in a job offer, you probably have a really better opportunity to get it, but there is an upper limit there. And then finally, when you look at it from the opportunity to get more money by staying as opposed to going somewhere else, you should probably really consider that. And that's my opinion, but I've seen this happen plenty of times out in all those regards. And you want to make sure that you're playing your cards right and hold that negotiation strategy on your own. Don't necessarily be a wild card, but definitely have a little bit of ace in the hole when you're coming into this and saying, hey, I really want more. All right, so let's break here. Module tasks, let's go through your job interviews, job offers, as well as opportunities to transition from one place to the next and ask yourself, was there an opportunity to ask for more? Could I have gotten more money and more compensation, more benefits in some capacity relatively speaking to not, and then start to conversate that. Maybe go back and try to communicate to your old supervisors, old admin, if you still got a relationship with them and saying, hey, I just want to go back retroactively and think about this and play this back and say, would, was there a window that I could have asked for more? Could I have gotten more money? And what would you have said? Because that could be a really good thought experiment for you to work through. It'd be a very helpful process for you to be better for the next opportunity so you can get what's deserving of it, what, what you're deserving. All right, guys, let's break here and we'll go on to the next module.